Hey guys, thanks for coming to 1500 ESPN's Facebook page. I'm Derek Whatmore, and I cover the Twins for 1500 ESPN. I also cover the Vikings and do that other kind of stuff. But the Twins, the Twins is my main gig. Um, I'm going to open this up to questions. If you guys have anything that you want to ask me, please feel free. That's what this is for. Just leave it in the comment section. I will make sure to get to it as quickly as I possibly can. Um, if you'll excuse me for a quick second, I'd like to send the link out on Facebook so that People who aren't here can come see this. Go live. Oh, that's weird, seeing myself on the computer. I'm recording this on my cell phone, so uh, if the quality's bad at all, that's why I'm using that as my excuse. Share this. Hey, and while I'm doing this, I will tell you guys about a column that I wrote yesterday. I don't know how many of you follow the Five Thoughts columns, but I posted one to 1500ESPN.com yesterday about the five catchers that the Twins should go after in free agency. I got to be honest that I've been a little bit surprised that there's so much um, excitement in social media world over the Twins' possibility of signing Jason Castro. Um, I understand that the metrics say that he's a good pitch framer and has been for the past three seasons, so Probably not a fluke the way those metrics are measured, but I just don't know that it's really enough um, to be excited about Castro. Maybe he's a serviceable fill-in kind of guy, but if you if you get a chance, go read the column. I mean, offensively, this guy is less impressive than Kurt Suzuki. Um, I know a lot of people are going to take issue with the fact that Kurt Suzuki can't really throw out runners, and that's true, and... Uh, it's hard to blame them for thinking that way. But anyways, my whole point um, in the Castro v. Suzuki is I think that the devil you don't know is always more tempting than the one that you do. People have gotten used to Kurt Suzuki and they're apparently tired of him if my Twitter timeline and email list respondents are any indication. But uh, I'll just say that I don't really get it. I'm not really sure that I'm on the uh, Castro is the savior, get rid of Kurt Suzuki. Um, Final let Kurt Suzuki walk, but you'll see my number one recommendation in that column uh, if you do go check that out. Um, I'll get to questions here in a second. I want to post this to Facebook. Okay. And we got our coffee brewed, so... We're all good. Um, we got a question coming in from Grady. Uh, any free agent pitchers the Twins should go after? Mm, well, okay. It's a good question. It depends what you think about the Twins in 2017, right? I mean, that's kind of been my argument this whole time, is that eh, they could spend some money this winter, and that'd be fine, and they definitely do need to fix their pitching staff, but... I'll actually tease another column I wrote. I promise this won't be all teases for columns. But I addressed the five pitchers that I thought could help the Twins next year. And I'll just go through some of those because two of them were free agents or were going to be free agents. Um, two of them free agents. One of them was going to be... Anyways, I'm confusing myself, so I'll stop confusing you. I thought Jeremy Hellickson would have been a pitcher to go after, but the Phillies extended him the qualifying offer of $17.2 million, and he took it. Um, I was surprised by that. I thought Hellickson was going to hit free agency and go pursue a multi-year contract, which he certainly would have gotten if he had gone to free agency. Decided not to. He wants one more year in Philadelphia, I guess, or $17.2 in one season was too tempting to turn down. Um, uh, he could hit free agency again next winter, and maybe if you're looking ahead... If you're his agent or if you're representing him in any way, maybe that's what you're thinking about is, hey, take a rich one-year deal and then you can get a rich multi-year deal next winter, assuming you pitch well this summer. So it's betting on himself a little bit. I thought it could have made sense. I don't know if the Twins were really in the market to spend that much money on a pitcher. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the other free agents, it's not that exciting. I mean, Rich Hill, but you're not really reading anything about uh, connecting the soon-to-be 37-year-old with the Twins. He's the, uh, the the cream of the free agent crop, so that says a lot about the crop. Um, Rich Hill, decent pitcher, but if you're in a multi-year rebuild like the Twins, I'm not sure you commit to somebody in his late 30s like that, unless you think he's going to um, sustain that level better than most pitchers at that age and kind of, kind of defy aging. Um, Ivan Nova... There's another free agent starter, 
But uh, unless you believe the magic serum that he found in Pittsburgh and just became excellent all of a sudden, stop walking people, started striking everybody out, um, saw his ERA plummet as a result. Maybe. I mean, I'm buying some of that. I think Ivan Nova's always been one of those pitchers who's had good stuff and you kind of wanted to see more from him when he was with the Yankees. Uh, but I don't know that you commit a big money multi-year deal to him. Um, where does that leave the Twins? They could explore a trade for pitching, or they could stay in-house. They could count on the fact that Phil Hughes is going to bounce back, um, be healthy in 2016. If he's any semblance of his 2014 self, that's a big step forward for the Twins. Also, I've written this before. Um, I'm, cont- I'm still on this bandwagon. No one's, no one's talked me off of this opinion yet. Trevor May should probably be in the starting rotation. Uh, he had an up and down year and injuries played a big part in that in 2000, uh, in 2016. But for the 2017 season, um, I would go to spring training expecting that he'll be one of the five starters. I don't know that the Twins will do it. We'll wait and see what the new regime thinks about. I'm ex- um, especially interested in what Derek Falvey thinks about pitching and relievers becoming starters. Although I would argue that May's always kind of been a starter and has been put in high leverage roles sort of by necessity or by the Twins' choice. Um, I'd try him out in the starting rotation. I think that'll help. So uh, I don't know if that answers your question, Grady, but I hope that it does. Um, Aaron, where does Vargas fit into the Twins' future? Is he a part-time first baseman, full-time DH? Aaron, that question's pretty similar to what we were asking last year about Byung-Ho Park. You remember it was... Well, okay, why'd you sign a DH first baseman? You've got Joe Maurer, you've got Trevor Plouffe, you've got Miguel Sano, and their solution was to move Miguel Sano to the outfield. Um, I think that was a mistake from the beginning, and I wrote that. I was very critical of the move. It turned out to backfire in the Twins' face, and they kind of said, okay, well, that's done. That's over with. Um, I don't know. I don't know if you've seen the last of Miguel Sano in the outfield. Uh, GM Thad Levine sort of hinted, uh, at that, at his introductory press conference, that he thinks Sano could play some outfield. Um, I'd be a little surprised unless Sano has dropped the 20 or 30 pounds that he says he wants to drop this winter. Um, I just don't see an outfielder there. It is much... It, look, he's got physical tools. We talked about this on the video last week. He's got physical tools, and I could eventually see him being a league average or even better than average third baseman. That's because he's been playing infield his whole life. He's been working at that position. And for multiple years now, he's been trying to become a major league caliber third baseman. He didn't start trying to become a major league caliber outfielder until spring training last year. So it should be no surprise that somebody like that, with his limitations, struggled in the outfield. Um, Anyways, I I won't make this all about Sano. There may be other questions about Sano and Trevor Plouffe and all that stuff, but I want to answer your question on Vargas, Aaron. It's a really good question uh, because Byung-Ho Park clouds up that picture. I don't know what you can expect from Park in the next three years of his contract. I will say that Kenny Vargas sort of rejuvenated himself. I was ready to give up on him. I thought, "Mm, he's probably not a player, and he's not good enough at first base to really keep around a bat that chases everything outside of the strike zone and strikes out all the time and has occasional power. He'll accidentally hit a fastball out. But then Vargas came and had a really nice uh, impression toward the end of the 2016 season. I don't know where he fits in. He's out of minor league options, so it's going to be really interesting to see what happens going into spring training. I've thought this for a little while. I guess I'll say it on this video. What if there was a team that wanted to take a flyer on Kenny Vargas and he became trade bait? I don't think he'd get a lot in a trade necessarily, so I don't think it's time to like demand that the Twins trade him or anything like that. But I don't know. He is a powerful human being. I think he has his obvious defensive limitations. Um, He might be better than he once was, but I still think he's a liability at first base. Um, I don't know. He's an interesting player. I don't see him as part of like a rebuilding future that he would be your full-time DH, but who knows? We'll see. I think Byung-Ho Park and uh, Miguel Sano play a big factor, and, and Joe Maurer for that matter, play a big factor into what happens with Vargas going forward. Bill McRoberts asks, are the Twins going to get a real shortstop? Good question. I don't know. Uh, We did talk about that on last week's Facebook Live video. So if you want to find that, it's on on my Facebook page, actually. Um, Facebook.com slash Derek Wetmore MLB. Um, You can find that video posted there. And I talked a lot about Jorge Polanco and the potential that he has. I wouldn't give up on Polanco yet. 
Um, if he opens the season as the everyday shortstop, I don't think that's a bad thing for the Twins. But I do think they have to find out if the glove and the arm can stick at shortstop because while we saw stretches where he was decent in the field, I just don't think we saw the consistency that the consistency that you'd want to have in an everyday shortstop. The bat's nice. I think you'll uh, you'll want to find every excuse to keep the bat in the lineup and and keep him on the field. And if shortstop is that avenue, then maybe you have to explore that. But he definitely has some, um, I'll call it maturing to do, just for lack of a better term. Um, maturing in the field, he's got to learn to slow things down. He's got to learn to make the easy plays, keep his hands consistent, and also make the throws to first base. Like it, it sounds simple. It's not simple, and Jorge Polanco showed us that last year. But um, I don't think that's a terrible option at shortstop for the Twins. With where they're at going into the 2017 season, I think it could do worse than Jorge Polanco as your everyday shortstop. Um, need coffee and getting to more questions. Okay, uh, Jeffrey. Jeffrey asks, the Astros traded Pat Neshek to Philly for cash. Why didn't the Twins acquire Neshek? They needed an upgrade to the bullpen. I don't know. That's a good question. I hadn't heard anything about Nishek rumors. Um, and I wonder if there's anything. I, d I doubt this very much. But you remember how it kind of is kind of a messy ending for Nishek in Minnesota? I doubt that that played any role into it. Um, you know, water under the bridge. And even the twins who I view as loyal to a fault and sometimes sort of stubborn. And I'm addressing maybe the older regime. Um, I don't know much of anything about the two new guys. But... Uh, those are two things that I would criticize the Twins for, is uh, sort of sort of stubbornness um, after decision-making. Even they would put aside differences if it, if it helped the team. You know, the guys in the doghouse, you remember the big stories that always used to be so-and-sos in Ron Gardenhire's doghouse? Well, like, Glenn Perkins was one of those guys, right? At one time, rumored to be in Gardy's doghouse. And he's talked about this on 1500 ESPN in the past, that he wasn't sure what his future was going to be with the Twins. There were times when he was just, um, I don't know, he, he was sort of waiting to see what might happen. And then fast forward, he's a three-time All-Star closer. He's a lights-out reliever, one of the best in the American League, went healthy. Um, I don't know. So anyways, I, I wouldn't put too much into them not acquiring Neshek. I'm curious to see how their bullpen sorts out, but... I don't, like last year, I was saying, okay, you got to take yourself seriously as a World Series contender or don't take yourself seriously as a postseason contender. Um, this year, I'm probably, after, you know, after you lose that many games, I am probably on the other side of the spectrum saying that, like, this isn't the year to build out for the World Series. Um, make sure that your young players can compete. Make sure that you can sort of get back into competitiveness. And if you mess around, nice, but this should be about the two and three and four year future of the twins and, and not the immediate future. So I don't know if that answers your question on Nishek. Um, great story. Uh, I like Nishek's story a lot. Um, will the twins trade for a couple of pitchers? This is Bill McRoberts again. Uh, will they trade for a couple of pitchers? Uh, if they don't get a, a couple pitchers, the fans will not be back. Well, I don't control what the fans do and I'm not here to sell season tickets. Um, I personally wouldn't be offended if the Twins didn't trade for multiple starting pitchers. Um, I could see this going one of a couple of ways. If you want to really strip down and go young and try to load up on assets, well, you're going to trade Brian Dozier and you're going to trade Irvin Santana. But if you think of yourself as a halfway competitive team that just needs a couple of fringe pieces, well, then you're probably not going to do those two things. And you're probably also not going to dump a ton of resources in the in the form of prospects or money um, into starting pitching. I do think the pitching is the number one thing that the Twins need to fix. I've written that a lot of different times in a lot of different columns, um, including the five thoughts column that I mentioned earlier where I said basically job 1A is fix the starting rotation and here are five guys that could help you do it. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if they will uh, make a big trade or not. I mean, obviously Dozier's the one we're all kind of waiting to see. See what happens, um, but I would I would uh, not judge the fans at all if they did not trust the product in this next season. Um, that's not really my job. My job's to analyze the moves that they do make. Um, Mike, 
Uh, do you think there's a chance that any of the Twins' better young players could be traded? If so, who? Hmm. A dramatic pause for a sip of coffee. I don't know. Um, that's a good question. I wouldn't trade Miguel Sano. I wouldn't trade Byron Buxton. I wouldn't trade J.O. Barreos. I probably wouldn't trade Max Kepler. Maybe I'm risk averse. I don't know. Um, I think that those four players can be the sort of nucleus around which the Twins can build. They're going to need more, and they're definitely going to need more pitching. But... I don't know. That's a pretty good list. Young guys who were well regarded as prospects who are now starting to show in the major leagues that they can be impact players at a young age. I mean, these guys are 22 and 23 years old. So you want those guys when they're 24 to 27 to 29. Those are those are the players you want. Um, can you build around them? We'll see. Uh, they're going to have to make some adjustments to this roster to be more competitive. But uh, I don't know. Would they trade any uh, other good young players. Like, like if you're talking about an Eddie Rosario, I don't know if I'd trade him after last season unless somebody thinks his value is more of like what his 2015 value was. Um, I'm really curious to see about Rosario though, man. I think, uh, I think this could go one of two ways. I think he could be an impact everyday regular player, or I think he could be a fourth outfielder. Um, he's got some development and a lot of it comes down to strike zone discipline and pitch recognition and all those kinds of things. A lot of young players have problems with it, but I just juxtapose him with a guy like, you know, Miguel Sano and, and Max Kepler, and maybe that's an unfair comparison, but they just have a much better idea of what they're doing at the plate, a much better idea of the strike zone. Um, that's kind of one of the elements that you need as part of your hit tool to be a successful major leaguer, unless you hit a ton of home runs. Um, I, he, he doesn't really have that, but he's shown flashes of being a good player. Uh, who else would you trade, I guess? Um, Jorge Polanco? I don't know. You could trade Polanco. Um, other players, like... I don't know. I'd just be kind of averse to trading pitching right now, but there's probably a long list of guys you could get something for if you wanted to deal prospects that are either in the majors or, or like, sort of uh, at, at the next level, uh, on the next step, or, or going to be in the majors. Mm. I don't know. I'm not trying to start rumors here, so don't take this off as reporting. This is just straight analysis of their roster without uh, without conferring. Um, I don't know that there are really young players that you'd want to trade right now necessarily. Um, Danny Santana is not going to have you know value. They they probably have limited options there. That's probably my best answer, Mike. Um, so get some other questions. And then let's see. I got to get going soon to get to the radio station. Uh, if you want, you can listen to 1500 ESPN um, later today. I'm going on at 1145 with Mackie and Judd. So we'll talk some twins, I'm sure. Uh, I bet you they're going to rip me apart for my twins catching column, but that's okay. I'm ready. Uh, they ripped me apart uh, a couple of weeks ago for some stuff. And instead of just sitting back and taking it, I actually threw some jabs back at them. So anyways, if they're going to bring the heat, they better be ready for some comebacks. Um, minor leaguers with a chance to make the big club. That's probably a better question for spring training. Michael, it's a good question, but um, we'll see how the rest of their roster shapes out before we get to that. Um, if the Twins do sign, here's Matt O'Connell, uh, fan of the sweater game. Thank you, Matt. Uh, if the Twins do sign a Ramos as a catcher, um, what do they do until he's ready? Can they count on John Ryan Murphy? I don't know. I thought they could count on him last year. I thought that it was a good trade for the Twins to send Aaron Hicks to the Yankees. I wrote about it from both perspectives. I wrote, here's how the Twins might regret this decision. And then I also said, eh, but a reasonable risk for a player who you're probably selling high on and you're addressing your organizational need. Um, John Ryan Murphy just had a nightmare of a season. I think he's better than that. I had one National League scout tell me this summer that he's like, yeah, well, we all saw this coming. You know, he gets... He gets to an everyday role. The Yankees were hiding him, and he could hit 8th, ninth in their lineup and play every couple of days, and the Twins are going to count on him, and he's just going to get exposed. And I don't think that's like the prevailing opinion, but that's what one National League scout told me last summer, that this was no surprise that John Ryan Murphy struggled. Man, I don't agree with that. Um, you look at some of his minor league numbers. You look at some of the stuff that he did with the Yankees. 
Um, I still like the fact that he's got a lot of team control and that he's cheap. So it doesn't really, you know, it doesn't matter a whole lot if, I mean, if he's not the answer, well, okay, then you wasted the Aaron Hicks resource, but you took a shot and tried to upgrade your catching and, and it didn't work out. Um, but if you go with some combination of John Ryan Murphy and Mitch Garver, um, I don't know, that's probably a reasonable plan at catcher unless you are trying to win 95 games this year in which case there are a lot of spots you need to upgrade including catcher but if you're the twins and you're sort of just trying to um, rebuild the pitching staff and fix everything on the fly and become as competitive as you can as quickly as you can I would be absolutely willing to punt on a half season of catching with um, John Ryan Murphy, Mitch Garver, some combination um, Juan Centeno has been taken off the 40-man. I think that's the right decision. I was unimpressed with him behind the plate. And for kind of just a journeyman bat, uh, they're not missing a lot. Good guy. Um, he'll land on his feet somewhere. But um, I don't think that you want three and a half months of Juan Centeno while you're waiting for Wilson Ramos. But I'd be willing to wait if I'm the Twins. I wrote about it in the column. If I'm the Twins, I'd be willing to wait. Uh, Wilson Ramos is a big upgrade. And there's going to be some competitive teams who probably do get scared off by the fact that he might be out, you know, the first whole half of the season. It, it could be a long recovery process from that ACL tear. Um, so anyways, long answer to your question, but uh, thanks for coming by, Matt. Um, what do you think the odds that the Twins trade Brian Dozier? I would say non-zero. Phil Mackey says sweater game. Yes, thank you. Michael Lindner, fish tank update. Oh, I like that question. Uh, right now I've only got three clown loaches, but... Uh, I am doing a planted aquarium, and I picked up my CO2 cylinder the other day, actually. Um, so I'll set that up over the Thanksgiving break here, and once I get some CO2 in there, it's time to start planting. Um, thank you for the question. I'll, I'll keep you posted on that in future videos. Matt O'Connell, Team Sweater. I know. Thank you. Uh, Phil Mackey says, looks like No Shave November is coming along well for you. He's right. Just wait till December. beard. Uh... And then Phil wraps up by saying, who wins in a fight, Miguel Sano or 100 kindergartners? Uh, I would hope that Miguel Sano would be smart enough to walk away from that fight. That'll do it for this video. Thank you guys for coming to Facebook Live. Um, if you want, you can find my Facebook page. It's uh, uh, facebook.com slash Derek Wetmore MLB. Um, I'm always there answering questions. If you drop comments or share articles or opinions or anything like that, uh, whatever you got, love to hear it. We're doing a Touch Em All podcast later today. Find that on iTunes, and I'm going on with Mackie and Judd at 11.45. Thanks for coming. Till next week, see ya.